popular song today. I'm Matt Coriel. With me is my co-host Teddy Roosevelt. Come on baby, look at the camera. Nice. Every week we'll listen to a song at the top of the charts and ask whether the song is well made, as if it hadn't been distributed yet to millions of people and there was still time to make changes. This week we'll listen to Katy Perry's Dark Horse and focus on the chorus and the bridge. Let's listen from the verse and you tell me where the chorus begins. Make me I call a ruby slipper chorus. Why? I'll tell you. Do you remember what happens at the end of The Wizard of Oz? Spoiler alert! Glinda floats in on her bubble and tells Dorothy that she has always had the power to go back to Kansas. Why didn't you tell her in the beginning before this life-threatening odyssey? The power was all along in the ruby slippers. Similarly, we were waiting for the chorus only to find that we had been listening to it the whole time. That's why I call it a ruby slipper chorus. There are various ways that a chorus announces itself to us. Very frequently, a chorus will simply explode on the scene. It sounds very fresh. For example, I want it that way. Tell me why. I'll give you the strum. Tell me why. Nice acoustic guitar. Let's take another example. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi even opens up some space to create an explosion of sound. Listen again. Let's have a bit of fun. Let's go to iTunes. I'm just gonna put it on random, and as long as it has a chorus, not all songs do, we'll listen to see how is the chorus announced. You know, you roll the dice, you take what comes. It's Raining Men. Just about for anything better, there is a literal thunderclap to announce the chorus. Let's try another one. Dolly Parton, 9 to 5. Love this number. Out on the streets, the traffic starts jumping, folks like me on the job from 9 to 5. Working 9 to 5, what a way to make a living. So the chorus might announce itself with literally a bang. That's a different type of writing, it's not what we have here. In Katy Perry's tune, why does the chorus sound like one big pre-chorus, one big build up to the chorus? The first reason is that the chorus actually builds the entire time. Boy, Waiting, it's you're building the tension in the, in the chorus. Baby, are you ready for, ready for? Even here, are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, we're ready! Those mind, strings! Here's the chorus! No, it was over. I love it. So the chorus sneaks up on us. It's part of the seduction of the tune. I think that's such a cool trick. These guys, they know how to write an explosive chorus. So when it doesn't show up, that's on purpose. What else do we notice about the examples? The chorus announced itself with the title. It's Raining Men. 9 to 5. Now there is a tradition where the title might come at the end of the chorus. In Katy Perry's tune, on the other hand, the title, Dark Horse, is slipped in somewhere in the middle. Do you dare to do this? Cause I'm coming at you like a dark horse. This week, as you're listening to music, ask yourself, how does the chorus announce itself? Now it's time to turn to Juicy J's contribution. Before we listen to Juicy J's contribution, let's take a second to think about what makes a successful rap. This is not the place for an exhaustive discussion on that issue, but I'll throw out a few things. One, the rhyming. So much of the pleasure of a rhyme is being surprised, and rap music brings us surprising rhymes all the time. Two, wordplay. Not just in the rhyming words, but in the entire text. Three, I'm gonna combine rhythm and flow. 
rhythm, which I'll take to be the compositional component, and flow, which is the performative component. But they go together. Are the rhythms surprising, engaging? Do they feel right with the words with which they're paired? And finally, the content. What does the rap actually say? And is the communicated thing appropriate to the context? In this case, to the rest of the song. All right, Juicy J, what do you got? Uh, she's a beast. I call her karma. She's a beast. I call her karma. He's trying to do some wordplay here. We all know the expression, karma is a B. But the B in that expression is not beast, it's something else. Now, if he had written, she's a B, I call her karma, that would be wordplay. But instead, we end up with something a bit confusing and A for effort, I guess. All right, let's keep going. She eats your heart out like Jeffrey Dahmer. She eats your heart out like Jeffrey Dahmer. Creepy as it is, I think it's clever. So, nice. But the rhythm is terrible. She eats your heart out. Like Jeffrey Dumb. I mean, it's just stilted and, and awkward. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. Let's jump ahead a bit. You may fall in love when you meet her. If you get the chance, you better keep her. No, no. You may fall in love when you meet her. The whole point of the song is that when you meet her, not you may fall in love, but you will fall in love. If you get the chance, you better keep her. She's keeping you. There's no going back as the creepy voice says, blissfully unaware of what's going on outside of the, of the bridge. No good. She's sweet as pie, but if you break her heart, she turns cold as a freezer. She's sweet as pie, but if you break her heart, she'll turn cold as a freezer. Part of the pleasure of the simile, like the pleasure of the rhyme, is the surprise element. When you say she's cold as the freezer, it's as good as saying she's cold as ice, which is as cliched a thing as you can get. That fairy tale ending with a knight in shiny armor She can be my sleeping beauty I'm gonna put her in a coma What? That fairy tale ending with the knight in shining armor She can be my sleeping beauty I'm gonna put her in a coma Well, aside from getting the fairy tale wrong Of course, right? It is the prince is not the one who puts sleeping beauty in the coma He takes her out of the coma Comas really have no place in a song about uh, seduction. Word choice. Teddy Roosevelt has reminded me that one should always have something nice to say. So, let's look at the last quatrain. Her love is like a drug, I was trying to hit it and quit it, but the mama so dope I messed around and got addicted. Two things that are great about that. First, the drug language. Her love is like a drug, I was trying to hit it, mama's so dope, and I got addicted. Each line has a bit of a drug reference, and I think that works nicely. My favorite thing about the rap, though, is the last sound. He hits that last note and holds it out underneath the chorus as it comes back in. I messed around and got addicted. So, well done there. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. People know that Aphrodite is a Greek goddess and the video is Egyptian, right? I'm gonna make you a star, kid.